Every winter, Britain's railways take a battering, and every winter, passengers bear the brunt, as services are delayed and cancelled. It's pathetic. Every year, we moan about it. Abysmal. Abysmal, yeah, terrible. The excuses drive us up the wall. People just want to go home. It's cold, it's winter, it's Christmas. So what's the railway doing about it? Why is it not working? Literally, you spend a lot of time on your hands and knees in the cold, digging. Old school way. How does the weather affect our journeys? I've been in the railway 37 years, and I've never seen the train as bad as this before with water. And who are those people in orange waving? This winter, we travelled the network to find out what it takes. There's quite a bit of danger. There's a lot of debris, bricks and things come over in the waves. It's not just water. To survive winter on the railways. The enemy is the weather, really, you know, for, for the railway. Uh, it does give it a good kick in. The winter's not so much of a problem as, as the autumn. It, it really is the leaves that are the train driver's biggest nightmare. It's certainly the, the, the trickiest time to, to drive a train. It's really slippery. If you were a motorist, it's like slipping on black ice, really. The train will either slip when you want it to go or will slide when you want it to stop. Obviously, not being able to stop is the worst thing. Leaves on the line is a national joke, but passengers aren't laughing in November when leaves mean delayed and cancelled train journeys. As the trains go along the tracks, leaves get sucked underneath between where the wheel and the rail is. As the wheels pass over, and you'll have, you know, depending on the size of the train, 16 wheels may pass over this set of leaves, creating that pressure, creating that temperature, and baking these things, this organic material, onto the railhead. Leaves can also have a terrifying effect. The coating they make cuts the electrical circuit, which tells the signal box where the train is, making the trains literally disappear from view. It's a bit like the, if the air traffic controller's TV screen turns off, the, the trains disappear and the, the signalers then have to stop all the trains, find out where they all are, and then start them up again safely. In the Waterloo Control Centre, Chris and Paul are the LEAF team. It's their job to schedule the LEAF-busting maintenance trains which clean the tracks, without disrupting the passenger services. But there still means we've got to retime a passenger train, because one passenger train is booked to stand at Bentley for 20 minutes. You know, we've got to do that, we've got to go out, we've got to do all the main line between Wadden and Bacon. Oh, yeah, yeah, all right, okay. We had a, quite a good leaf all season with not too much delay, until three days ago, when the combination of the weather, leaves on the ground, and what leaves are left, in particular oak leaves, have um, given us a lot of problems. Today, we've had three trains that could not stop in the platforms correctly. What we call, uh, they've slid by. To stop the train sliding past platforms, Paul and Chris send leaf buster trains out to blast the Teflon-like coating off the rails. The high-pressure jets are so powerful that if used while the train is stationary, they will cut through the rail. Mobile operations managers, or MOMs, like Tony here, are the paramedics of the track. They're the first to the scene of any reported incident. They squirt an acid nicknamed Agent Orange onto the track. We'll uh, apply a citrus that will eat into anything that's sort of laying on top of the line, and then give that a minute or two to soften it all off, and then basically just put a small line of sand at about, about 20 metre intervals. And then, basically, when the next train comes along, it does exactly what the MPV vehicle does. Except I wouldn't want to do the 150 miles that they do every day, but... It's mid-December, and a wild winter storm is heading off the Atlantic, whipping the northwest coast. Last year, high winds and huge waves battered the line here near Whitehaven in Cumbria, which collapsed into the sea. The rail engineers are worried it may be about to happen again. We're looking at really high winds tonight, Jed. High tide. 80 miles per hour, high tide, 1 a.m., 8 metres swell with southwesterly winds, which is probably going to look at pushing it over 9 metres. The first train is about to leave for Carlisle, 
but it may not be safe as winds are picking up. So this is the 620 service from Whitehaven going north up to Carlisle. It's the first service, uh, so we're going to be cab riding it, looking out for things like uh, trays on the line, high tide, sometimes wash things over and, and go on the line. There's quite a bit of danger with it. There's a lot of debris, bricks and things come over in the waves. It's not just water. Sometimes we have no choice but to close the line. It's our last resort. We will keep trains moving if we possibly can. But sometimes the weather just gets... It just beats us sometimes. Engineers are sent ahead as a scouting party in case the track has been damaged or blocked. At the moment, it's high tide. It's probably the last opportunity to get any faults, so we're just going to a problem area now to uh, make sure everything's OK. It's not looking too bad at the moment. It would be over crashing over here if it was uh, as bad as it does get. Waves need to be a lot higher than this for the uh, chairs to be stopped. The passengers are in luck. The line will remain open. But it could still be closed at any time for any number of unexpected reasons. Yeah, we've had all sorts of yeah. coming down, down somewhere today. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've had cows off, uh, dogs. Sheds, Sheds, houses, everything, all sorts yeah. of things. Bikes, you know what I mean? Yeah. It could be yeah. anything, really, you just don't know. While Cumbria escapes, the same storm is gathering pace. In less than 24 hours, some of the highest wind speeds ever recorded in Scotland are about to hit. I mean, that tells you the wind speed. 113 miles an hour in some places. Now, these are excessive speeds. 113 miles an hour actually on land is certainly some of the highest I've ever seen within the, the real industry. At the Glasgow Control Centre, operations manager Martin has the emergency weather action team, the EWAT, on full alert they expect some serious damage. Welcome to the 10 o'clock uh, EWAT. Uh, just to discuss, to follow on from yesterday's uh, discussions on uh, the wind and train service. It's quite exceptional winds for a couple of hours, at least, over the northwest Scotland. It's generally north of Glasgow where the, the big concern is. Can you just confirm the ferocity of the winds and what the, the time scale is? It two hours or three hours? It's probably fair to say that for about six hours in any one spot, it's going to be very nasty. The, the timing is probably between about one or two in the morning through to about five in the morning, maybe a sort of three hour window where those 100 mile an hour plus gusts are possible. The weather conditions are life threatening. Martin makes a major decision. I've suspended train services until 1600 tomorrow beyond Dumbarton and beyond uh, Eco Winning. Anything over 90 miles an hour for wind speeds, basically the, the line's closed. It's anticipated that there'll be extreme damage to the network as a result of these winds. The northeast highlands near Inverness expects the worst of the storms. Alec Campbell is in charge of the clear up. This is Alec Campbell up in Inverness. Yes, Alec. We, we have asked that we're, we're able to run an Inverness to Dingwall service, but that, of course, is dependent on you giving us a line back. But it certainly is our intention. If we get part of a line back, we, we want to run the service. The reason for the suspension of these routes is to give us a chance to start to go line proof uh, and check that these lines are safe. 180 miles northeast of Glasgow, the storm has wreaked havoc. Dozens of trees are blocking tracks, cutting off the link between Inverness and Dingwall for 1,500 passengers. The race is on to clear it before nightfall. We're going to line proof between Inverness and Dingwall. We're going to use the engine that's behind us to do the line proving. We've got a chainsaw crew at the back and we'll then proceed out towards Dingwall and hopefully clear the line and get services back starting again. It was really wild last night, some really strong gusts of wind. Basically, it's um, uh, tall trees that were uh, blown over last night. A good day for myself, no trees. We just get a clean run right off the Dingwall. Uh, no trees, no issues. Turn around, come back down. A bad day is littered with trees. We'll be here for hours, cut trees back. Alec is hoping for a good day, but his hopes quickly fade. Stop your train up ahead to your driver. Just up where the yellow sign is. Four or five trees have come down here. Yeah. 
We're just going to clear them trees first, then we'll come in. Boy, this one there. Please, yeah. The leaning trees can be lethal if cut in the wrong place. The trunk can literally explode once the force is released. This one here, there's a lot of force. It could spring back. You're working with chainsaws. Could be a lot of damage to the personnel. It's coming down quite easy. And it, just that last wee bit when you seen where you got that snap and it came down. In theory, it should come down that way every time. Sometimes yeah, it doesn't. This is job, Wally. You got it. the older boys stand back, you know. <laughs> Get on, mate. Come on. With reports of even more trees down, it's looking doubtful that Alec, Clem and Willie will clear the line before the evening rush hour or be home for dinner. Yeah, that's another one. We've only travelled half a mile. And that's just got an hour one to cut. Hopefully not a big one this time. <laughs> but whatever it is, we'll cut the line. Right, you jumped in, Willie. All the hundred you saw. It's not just a seven-hour day, what we have to do here. So we're looking at you know, up to 12 hours to do this, and we're travelling back and forward, so it does affect my family life at the same time. But despite the heavy workload... Right yeah. Willie and Clem are still cheerful. Who is it that's uh, the better uh, chainsaw operator between the two of you? Me. Well, modesty for buds, like, but, uh, I mean, <laughs> it, it's, it's before beauty. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably myself, you know, but I mean, Wally, Wally, I, 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 I talk to Molly know, so, and we work well together, so. <laughs> Heavy rain weakens the tree roots hold, increasing the danger of them falling onto the track. You see now the tree's starting to go. So it's going the way we, we expected it to go. And uh, better if we can lie down slowly. That's it. Down safe. Well done, well. <laughs> In 2014, more than 2,000 trees blew onto tracks and 600 trains reported hitting them. 10 hours, 16 trees and dozens of branches later, the line is cleared and the lads head back to Inverness. That's the result of our work today. Passengers are happy. We've all got thumbs up. Smiley, cheery faces. Excellent. But there's more bad weather on the way. This time, it's flooding doing the damage. In London, there's a perfect storm of commuter chaos and passenger fury. It's quite embarrassing that our national rail system is, is this much of a shambles. In 2014, floods swamped vast tracks of southern England. The entire railway track at Dawlish got washed into the sea, cutting off the main routes to and from the southwest. Last winter, I think, was a huge wake-up call for us. And what we saw was something that was unique for most of us in our career. It wasn't the severity of the, of, of the individual weather events, it was just the sheer number of them and the prolonged period of time. It, you know, it was effectively three months that the whole country suffered for, from one storm after the other. In the last five years, around 74,000 trains have been cancelled and at least 280,000 trains have been delayed owing to severe weather. And it's got the whole industry thinking about what are the likely trends going forward? What is the effect of climate change on our underlying weather patterns? And how is the railway of today constructed, designed to face up to that? The Dawlish track had to be entirely rebuilt at a cost of 35 million pounds. There are now plans to rebuild that line away from the seafront. This winter has seen Scotland take the brunt of the repeated bad weather. Last for days with gale force winds, the rail network was shut down. It rained, it poured, and it flooded. Went down the railway, it's, it's a challenge. I mean, we, we don't know what we're coming to. The phone, the phone rings and you need to respond to it, Kevin. Okay, I Just before Christmas, flood water from swamped fields near Mocklin 
gushed onto a main line between Scotland and England. Unaware of the danger ahead, the 1012 from Glasgow to Carlisle ploughed into a five-foot wall of water. 35 passengers were stranded until fire crews used ladders to make a bridge to rescue them. Rescuing the sunken train, however, is a little more complicated. I've been in the railway 37 years and I've never, I've never seen this, a train as, as bad as this before with water. The line is a main artery between the north of England and Glasgow, so it's vital they get back on track as soon as possible. Despite using heavy pump machinery, they're facing a losing battle. There's too much water coming for the actual volume that the pipe can carry. So it's overflowed down the banking. That's what's causing the, the, the whole flooding. The train, travelling at 50 to 60 miles per hour, also caused a mini tsunami that has destroyed the bridge ahead. The driver must have got a right scare coming into the puddle, you know, he's, he's hit that some force. I can't believe the damage that's been done just with the force of water. Late evening, and more contractors arrive with more heavy-duty pumps. It's a race against time. Basically, that's the pumps coming off and all the equipment getting laid off so we can set it up. So, and then what we're going to do, basically, is we're going to floor it down onto the, the tracks there, put the pumps in, and then we're going to constantly pump the water over to the river. Despite working through the night, there are no guarantees the line will be open tomorrow. Hopefully, weather permitting, by the morning, we'll see a big difference. Early morning, and after pumping out thousands of gallons of water, the train is finally back on dry land. When I arrived here yesterday morning, the water was at the step level of this train in the train. That's how deep it was here. There's been a pump in here and a pump in the next catch bit up to clear all this water. It would have been a dramatic thing for everybody on that train. I'll imagine the tonnage of that hitting water uh, even at 50 miles an hour. It would be quite an impact. I'm quite surprised that train's not derailed. I'm very surprised. And all it will take is another downpour for yet more flooding. This is our problem coming off that field. How can he cope with that? And that's it, it's, uh, quite mild to what it was. You see it, three, three o'clock, half three this morning. You couldn't see that. That's how bad that was there. Just pure water, just pure water. Thirty-six hours since the train was stranded, it's towed away. The line can reopen, and the track team can go home for Christmas. We're cooking with gas. That's it. We're happy as Larry. Yeah. Job complete. Meanwhile, in London, it's Christmas Eve. And thankfully, the weather is behaving. The Waterloo Control Centre is awash with Christmas spirit. Happy Christmas. Even the passengers on the concourse have something to cheer. Happy Christmas. Christmas is here, and our customers tend to come off the train, especially the ladies, kiss the staff. Merry Christmas! We just enjoy it. Even this unusual festive traveller knows where it's going. And the information team are enjoying a rare moment, dealing with happy customers. On the internal messaging there, Merry Christmas, and this tweet says, grateful to have a seat on this lovely festive train. Merry Christmas. Somebody on the uh, 1520 to Exeter is looking for a corkscrew because they currently don't have one and they have a cork bottle, so uh, good luck to them. Can't imagine the frustration of an unopened bottle of wine. Christmas Eve is almost over. A happy day without any significant disruptions. If only it could be Christmas every day.
The day after Boxing Day, engineering works overrun and network rail becomes network fail. What's really annoying is that there's just no communication at all. And um, we can't even go on East Midland trains, so there's no other way for us to get up north. We just have to wait here, which is terrible. More than 100,000 passengers are told trains to Scotland and the north of England aren't running. What time is your train supposed to be? <laughs> now. I think it's on the platform, but what hope is there? Does anybody seem to be getting on trains? No. <laughs> no. Makes you angry that the fact that it didn't do more to get it done. King's Cross Station is closed, and passengers are funneled into this small station in North London. I'm not here, mate. I've just got here, so I've just got to try and find my contacts. People just want to go home. People want to see their families. It's cold. It's winter. It's Christmas. It's just. It's quite embarrassing that our national rail system is, is this much of a shambles. Well, we're stood here for nearly an hour now. And where are you going to? We're going to Edinburgh. Mm. In fact, we're going beyond Edinburgh. But at least if we can get to Edinburgh, that would be a, good, a big help. But things get worse and worse. London descends into commuter chaos. Another major London station, Paddington, is also hit the same day by more engineering works near Heathrow. This time, safety checks overrun by 10 hours. An hour further up the western route at Reading, thousands of passengers are left stranded, and they are fuming. It's pathetic. The trains are coming from Cornwall up to Reading and having to stop here because they can't get into Paddington. The contractors responsible caught a £200,000 penalty. The boss of Network Rail had to apologise to Parliament. Well, let me start off by uh, once again unreservedly apologising to all of the travelling public on the 27th of December who were affected by uh, the two incidents. But just when we thought it was all over, and just as everyone is going back to work, commuters get another dose of dismal delays. In the London Bridge area. This time, the newly rebuilt London Bridge station with state-of-the-art platform systems has broken down. Abysmal. Abysmal, yeah. Terrible. Shocking. Very frustrated. Very frustrated. It's a very busy station, and it doesn't seem like they can cope at all. As network rail takes the heat in the south, further north, the January chill sets in, and the network survey team take to the skies. OK, so this booster we're approaching here has got a well-known fault on it. Already from here, we can see the issue. Just on the right-hand side here on the secondary connection, uh, it's glowing hot. This system is really advanced now. Uh, obviously, we've got the laser technology, we've got the coordinates, and we'll get somebody on the ground to go and have a look and uh, hopefully get that sorted before the bad weather comes. Now that we're coming into winter, um, you know, we could have various problems, such as flooding, uh, problems with the equipment failing. For example, yesterday, we identified two flooding issues. So. You know, the key is that we identify them and we can get the guys on the ground to go and have a look, sort it out, and then as soon as the bad weather gets here, then hopefully we've got it all sorted and we're okay. The enemy is the weather, really, you know, for, for the railway. Uh, it does give it a good kick in. This stretch of the Highlands main line between Inverness and Perth in the Cairngorms is frequently closed because of ice and snow. Fixing the problems involves men like Ross walking the line. Well, here's our only victim of a day. I, I hear I'll just have to remove it. As obviously been hit yesterday, it's quite stiff for the... Not much left of it anyway. 
do for the birds. It can be very, very treacherous conditions in the ice and that. And driving snow and winds and that, you just go out and do your job and and that's it. And and after six, well, certain shifts when you walk six miles, it's it's a very tiring, very sore after it. You find any of the loose, uh, these are called pandals that hold it in. Uh, if they come out, they've obviously been knocked back in. The bolts and the crossings, any slack ones, you tighten them. That's that's all part of your job. You you do that as you walk. This this here is a set of points, which uh, obviously this is a loop trains trains cross here. So I'm I'm going to oil this points now to lubricate them. To keep them, they have to be kept well lubricated because uh, this this one's a work from Avi Moore signal box, and the. Uh, the oil in, in there. Just mix an oil in it and keep them well lubricated. Duncan, could you put, I'm at the slot, could you put one, two, two points over for oiling, please? That's them in reverse now, Duncan, thank you. That's them back, Duncan. Right, thanks for that. You get an awful lot of snow here. And sometimes you're walking into really, you know, a gale force winds and that. Some night times it's in your face, so you just to get on with it and do it. Ross is unaware that one of the worst snowstorms in a decade is heading his way. And his efforts to keep the track open hit the buffers. Early January, and Scotland is certainly for the brave. Freezing blizzards and serious snow drifts have blocked the road and rail network. This radar image here is showing what's happened over the last sort of 15 hours or so over the, over the UK. Um, the blue showing uh, rain, the red showing areas of snow. This is actual, not forecast, and the grey showing where it's it probably on the balance of opinion is going to be snow. High winds and snow combined form the rail network's deadliest duo. After the winds had, had come in and died away, uh, then the snow came in at the back of that. And what became quite clear, it was average snowfall, uh, not particularly heavy. But when you couple that with the winds, you get drifting snow, which then you can have maybe three centimetres of snow in one area, uh, no effect on the railway. But if you get constant winds blowing in one direction, that three centimetres can end up three or four metres of, of packed snow in a dense area. A complete Scotland-wide network shutdown is the last thing they wanted. Usually we get the heavy, wet snow stays on the ground where it should do. Dry, fine, powdery snow gets blown around by the wind, gets picked up by trains as they thunder along. And of course, all that snow gets pulled into the electrical equipment of the trains. The trains warm, the snow melts, turns into water, and of course, the train can be short-circuited. With roads also blocked, the rail maintenance crew are making slow progress, leading to yet more delays for commuters. The survey helicopter gets a bird's eye view. I've got a real appreciation for the ground staff going out in all weathers, uh, trying to get to some of these remote locations and carry out various different tasks just to keep the railway running. But even a helicopter can be affected by the weather. An oncoming storm makes it too dangerous to continue. The chopper is forced to land. The snowplows are sent out from Inverness to clear the Highland Mainline. 
a vital route connecting the north of Scotland to the south. The area here is very remote. Uh, there is no shelter. Um, as areas we've came past already, we've, we've got about three shelters. It's, it's stopping the snow from blowing in. Mountainous conditions, etc., up here. The wind is the, the big factor that we've got. If it was just the snow falling, there wouldn't be the, the, the drift in the snow. But the wind that we actually have currently coming across, it's just blowing the snow. Because it's still powdery, it's still fresh, it's just blowing straight across. Uh, the fences at the side of the track are acting like snow fences, dumping the snow on the railway side of things. I can see that coming. Oh, shit. That's one of the worst exposed bits here. Yeah. I'm just trying to judge for a depth. I reckon you're verging on three foot anyway. Some of these drifts. In contrast to the high-tech computer systems, the engines pushing these snow plows are 17,500 horsepower diesel engines built in 1962. This one has got a staggering 3 million miles on the clock. He's gonna work! I don't believe it! <laughs> Come on now, Diggy! It's old, but reliable, and comes complete with long-handled broom. The treacherous terrain on this highland route is not for the faint-hearted. This is just coming up to the Slocht area, uh, which is the second highest point in the network that we've got. Obviously, it's an area where we do have a lot of uh, issues with the snow. Again, with the drifting, a lot of rock cuttings and things around this area, so we can get quite a build-up of snow at times. After a day of clearing the lines, freight trains are sent through on the first run. OK, that's the freight train travelling back down south. It's good to see, that's obviously what we're here today, to keep the traffic flowing. Each year, UK passengers make around 1.6 billion train journeys. On average, 24,000 trains run a day. And 70% of those come in and out of London in the southeast. To anticipate weather-related delays, weather forecasts are given 10 days in advance. But decisions are made based on the more accurate 24-hour predictions. 24 hours ahead, you know, we're being specific about amounts of snow, for example, or strength of the wind, and trying to get it down to the different routes, and even maybe subparts of routes as well. You know, some of the routes are quite large. It's mid-January, and the first patch of bad 2015 winter weather is heading towards the south of England. The response team at Waterloo gets into gear for a day of disruption. Is there any issues, anybody? I've just got one. We've got enough uh, vehicle cover, uh, Peter and uh, Will, for the moms. Route control manager Paul gets the Orange Army marching to potential trouble spots. Yeah. We could well see quite a few trees coming down, which are a big problem for us, um, and possibly some sort of general flying debris. Even the smallest impact has considerable implications on the schedule. But it's difficult to know. Um, we've had conditions that are much worse and nothing happens, and we've had conditions that are a lot less severe and we've encountered huge problems. And there's not a huge amount you can do to predict it. Early morning, and the mobile operations managers, or MOMS, have a problem. Dave, ask them if they got wellies. It's not good news. Flooding at Hinton Admiral means the busy Bournemouth to London service is not able to run. The line is shut. And commuters get tweeting. Oh, 
I'm going to send you some photographs in a second, um, Jeremy. The water is flowing, but we can actually stay here and monitor it. Just to add insult to injury, passengers had to take their shoes and socks off to catch a delayed train to work. We've all been out since dark this morning, trying to get the trains running for the passengers, and I can't say any more than that, really, apart from I'm freezing cold and I'm soaking wet and I'm shivering. <laughs> This seems to be reoccurring on a, a yearly basis. When we get a big downfall over a 24-hour period, um, it comes out of all the farmers' fields, which their fields are on like a gradient. So it's, it's, the water's got to run somewhere, and our, our drainage is not quite man enough to take fields and fields of water or inches of water all at one time. In 2014, frustrated commuters sent train companies 1.7 million tweets. 280,000 of those featured the words delay, late, and stuck. Oh, I, I did get you earlier on. Uh, you. That's it, Jeremy. You tell them. Well, I just thought I'd start hard and hurt their feelings. So my feelings are sufficiently hurt. There are some unhappy people out there. I understand their frustrations. Lots of people use the railway, so do I. So. Um, I completely understand their frustrations. So at 5.40, our first tweets, flooding at Hinton Admiral means that the line towards London Waterloo is currently blocked. Um, and we, Willie Wilmer, a great name, came back to us saying they're trying to remain optimistic, but the next two trains are currently only running at five miles an hour through Hinton Admiral, at which point we explain that that's a safety precaution um, and we do also have buses on standby just in case the situation worsens and we can't run trains. And they were positive, they said thank you for the information, but judging by the number of people on the platform <laughs> at Southampton, it's going to have to be a fairly large bus. But uh, sometimes, pe obviously, people are, are just unhappy with with a delay and the best we can do unfortunately is just apologize and explain that this was due to the flooding um, and flooding is outside of our control and even when the flooding and delays subside it doesn't help the already irate passengers to see track workers standing around doing nothing and waving at them actually the track team spotter has to wave at the driver to make sure they've been seen obviously they do see us when the trains going through on caution and, they, and it looks like we're not doing anything, but we can't work while the train's running past us, obviously. I feel sorry for the passengers. It's act of God, I call it. I mean, there's nothing we can do about rain coming out of the sky, so... While the mild weather continues in England, in Scotland, the Highlands main line between Inverness and Perth is six feet under. Old-school digging is proving hard work. At least five, six feet of snow, two shovels. We had to dig the site to get the trains moving again. The time has clearly come to bring out the million pound hairdryer. Mid January in the Cairngorms, and part of the Highlands main line is buried in six foot snow drifts. The Inverness to Perth route is the main link between North and South Scotland. Unless the drifts are cleared and frozen points melted, there'll be no London to Inverness sleeper service. The race is on to clear the line, and the network have a secret weapon, a snow train nicknamed the Million Pound Hairdryer. The night shift has high hopes of it. What are they doing? We're just going to use the train to blow away the snow, same as digging. <laughs> Before the snow train can blow, a bit of old-fashioned elbow grease is needed to dig out the signal wire. As you can see, the, the wire there, that's been cleared, but where we are just now is still to be cleared. Slow it down, Brian, please, over. Now it's putting out uh, quite a lot of heat, so we'll now allow it just to to start the thawing process. The snow train is more travelling sauna than hairdryer, gently and slowly melting away the problem. Well, I think we'll be here for, uh, for most of the night at this. Last night we were here, just two of us, about the train to dig out the points. So literally in a snowdrift, high winds, at least five, six feet, feet of snow, 
two shovels. We had to dig the site to get the train to move in again. After a long 14-hour shift in the snow, the track crew were also stranded. Apart from digging out these points, digging out the signal equipment, and then also digging out a police rescue van and digging our own van out of the road several times. We spent a lot of, a lot of time digging. <laughs> spent last night in the van, climbed the seats, had the heating on, just got a cup of coffee in the signal box to keep us going. And then our, our manager sent food up on the last train. And literally, you spend a lot of time on your hands and knees in the cold, digging, old school way. But despite snow and high winds, the team don't seem too bothered. When it's conditions like this, it's not too bad just now because the wind's not blowing in and that. So to be honest, we're quite fortunate tonight uh, with the weather conditions to get it done. So it's not too bad. Uh, who is the fastest digger between the two of you, for instance? When I have the shovel, it's 100% me because he's a, <laughs> he's a pencil pushing a staple in the office kind of guy. <laughs> It's not, often, it's not often he's out in the cold like the rest of us. But I'm the one that signed your timesheet, so... Uh, so. <laughs> this whole area in here was all full of snow earlier. With having the floor sitting on top, we've cleared the area around the points. The guys are finally able to relax, but only for a minute. There's another problem even further and even higher up the track. We got word from the signaller at Aviemore that uh, they were having problems with the points up at the Slocht. It's rather cold. The wind chill factor is minus 14. But the night is far from over. Oh, There's a lot of snow building up in the, in the points, so it's affecting the, the movement. So we'll bring the, we'll bring the train forward and see if we can clear it with the, with the train, but just now the conditions are, are not good at all. So I'm gonna go and get a shovel. North end. Working in sub-zero temperatures and high winds is all part of the daily job for the track team. Should we bring the train up? We'll get the blowers on this. You guys clear? Can you draw the train forward? I'll tell you when to stop, over. It's pretty cold, it's uh, snowing, and it's also drifting into the point, so this is, uh, this is quite difficult, yeah. All we can do now is just let the heaters do their job, and uh, we'll go inside and get some shelter and get out of the, the wind and the cold. These are CCTV cameras which are on each side of the burner. So there's a burner on each side on the four sides of the wagon. It was worth coming up here because the conditions are awful. That's, uh, that's the points at the south end of the slough now, uh, clear of snow. After a long, hard night, it's job done. It's been a cold and gruelling winter, and the battle against the elements is relentless. Over the next five years, passenger train travel is expected to increase by 20% to five and a half million journeys each day, which means more work for the men and women keeping the railways running. Well, there'll be no dinner tonight until such times as somebody comes and gets us. As railwaymen, particularly those who are outside signalmen and drivers, you get used to not going home at the appointed time. 
that's the way the job is. That's the way life is. It's not a bad day, actually, today compared to yesterday. Yeah, this is quite pleasant. <laughs> it's good crack yeah. most of the time, actually. Good, yeah, good crack with the boys and you wind each other up. We're the way to shoot it, but real boys get paid. You want, you want to join the ranks of the self-employed subcontractors? Uh, we, we don't make any money. <laughs> <laughs> All aboard! We're good, that one. Good to go. Right, we're good to go. See you tomorrow. Have a good day. OK, thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Your votes mean Fern's taken on the next Bush Tucker trial, floods of fear. Join us to see how she gets on on I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here Live from Australia. And it's next.